A very good evening to the teachers, parents, and students. I'm Lavanya from SDKT Ladang B as the moderator for today's session. Before I start, I would like to thank all of you for joining us today in our YouTube live classroom, which is brought to you by Sudaroli Valayoli YouTube channel in collaboration with the National Malaya Tamil School Teachers Union. I would like to convey our appreciation to the President of the Union and Headmaster of SJKT, Bagans Rai, Mr. R. P. J. Gopalan, and not to forget the entire team working hard for us behind the screen, Ms. Parimala, our Education Officer from PPD Manjong, Mr. Gunalan, our Education Officer from PPD Manjong, Ms. Pusparada, the headmistress of SJKT Kampong Columbia, Mr. Tanesh Balakrishnan, the ICT teacher from SJKT Ladang Nova Scotia 1, and Ms. Sarala Krishnan, the ICT teacher from SJKT Kampong Tun Samandan, and Madam Vijaya Malar Gunashekaran from SJKT Klebang Tamo. I would also like to thank our Human Resource Minister, Dr. M. Saravanan, the Para State Education Department, Hilir Para Bagandato and Manjung District Education Officer, EDDEC, Mind Apps, Pertubuhan Kesusastraan Baradi, and the online media supporters, Anigan.com and Yen Tamil. Despite schools being re reopened along with the recovery movement control order, the spirit to continue educating our children is still strong among us as educators. We greatly value and appreciate everyone's support towards the Sudaroli Valayoli team. Your constant support helps us to boost our confidence and motivate us to do more for our community. Therefore, please allow me to introduce the speaker for today's session. She is Miss Kosila, an English language teacher currently teaching at SJKT Ladang Serapo. She has been teaching English since 2015 and teaching Year 6 since 2016. She is also the head of the English language panel and the CEFR district trainer. Today, She'll be sharing her insights on model verbs with all of us. There are a few reminders for all viewers, especially to the students. First, please use the chat box for positive comments. Second, use appropriate language. Third, use the live chat to ask questions about today's topic. Fourth, don't post unnecessary emojis and unwanted messages because it will distract the others. If anyone goes against the rules stated, the admin will block you from the live chat. Hope the, hope the rules are understandable to all. Without further ado, I would like to pass the session to our speaker today to start her lesson. Ms. Kosila, let's explore. Thank you, moderator, Ms. Lavinia. Good evening, everyone. I'm delighted to be here, and I would like to express my gratitude and appreciation to the Sudaroli Valayoli team for granting me this opportunity. Schools are in full force starting today, and I hope everyone is doing well. In today's lesson, we will be focusing on model verbs. We will learn about the different types of model verbs and how to use it in sentences. Model verb is a type of auxiliary verb. It is also referred to as helping verbs. because model verb cannot stand on its own. It must be accompanied by another verb to make the sentence complete. Now, 
These model verbs are used in English to express something. They have a purpose. So we need to try and understand that purpose today. What is a model verb? As I explained just now, model verb is a type of auxiliary verb or helping verb. Let's look at the different types of model verbs. Okay, first, can, could, may, must, should, would, have to. Okay, students, please remember that have to is not a model verb, but it is often grouped together for convenience. So what are what in what situation do we use model verbs? Model verbs is firstly used to show that someone is able to do something. It expresses ability. For example, he can play the piano. Model verb is also used to show that something might happen, a possibility. For example, it may rain tomorrow. Besides that, it may rain tomorrow. Besides that, model verb Besides that, is used to it may rain tomorrow. Besides that, model verb Besides that, is used to tomorrow. Such that model verb such that is used to tomorrow. Such that model verb such that is used to tomorrow. Okay, besides that, model verb is used to ask for help. Could you open the door? Other than that. Model verb is used to ask for permission. May I go to the toilet? Finally, model verb is also used to show that it is necessary to do something. It shows obligation, certainty, and necessity. Let's look at the examples. For example, we must keep our classroom clean. And the second one, you have to finish your food. Okay, I hope all of you are clear with the uses of model verbs. Okay, let me remind you that model verb is used to express something. So you have to be clear about the purposes of the model verb. Okay, let's move on to the three basic rules of the model verb. The first one. You have to use model verb as it is. Please do not change the form of the model verb. Okay, as you can see here, I have provided two examples. He can swim. Okay, that is wrong because you have changed the form of the model verb. Please do. He can swim. That is the correct form. Okay, the second example. Use base verb after model verb. Please do not use infinitives. For example, I must to leave. It is getting late. Okay, when you use the word to leave, to is an infinitive. So when you use the word after must, it is wrong. So the proper way is I must leave. It is getting late. Okay, let's look at the third rule. Use not after models. Please don't use doesn't, don't, isn't, aren't. That's not appropriate. For example, you don't shoot smoke. That is the wrong use of sentences. The correct use should be you should not smoke. Okay, these are the three basic rules that you must always keep in mind so that you can use the model verbs in an appropriate and correct way. Let's move on. 
Okay, this is the first verb that we are going to look at. Can or cannot. When do we use can? Cannot is the negative form of can't, and you can the every the con, and you can even use can't. Okay, can or cannot is used to show that to say that something is possible now or in the future. For example, I can see the shop from my room window. You can consult the doctor tomorrow. So tomorrow, the word tomorrow that indicates that it is the future. So you can consult the doctor tomorrow. Okay, for the second purpose, can is also used to make a request. The first example, can't you tell her the answer? Meaning the person is requesting you to tell another person the answer. So you're making a request. Okay. Another form of request is, can you help me carry this table? Can you? So you're making a request, right? So can you help me carry this table? The third use of can is when you're using it to give or refuse permission. You cannot tell her the secret. Okay, so you're refusing to give your permission to tell the secret. Okay, so when you want to give permission, what do you say? So you can say they can pass up their books now. So you're giving them permission to pass up their books now. Moving on to the last purpose of can. You use can to show ability or lack of ability. For example, you can write well. So you say, I can write well. And in another example, for example, if you can't swim, or if another person can't swim. So you can say, she cannot swim. I can write well. She cannot swim. So there are four instances where you can use the word can or cannot. Okay, are you clear? Okay. If you are, let's move on to the next model work. Could or could not. Could or could not is used to ask for permission. For example, could I borrow your pen? Could you switch on the light, please? Okay, are you clear? Could I borrow your pen? Meaning you're asking someone for permission to borrow their pen. Could you switch on the light, please? So you're asking someone to help you to switch on the light. Let's move on to the next one. Could or could not can be used to make a request. Look at the, please look at the first example. Could you help me? So you're requesting someone to help you to do something. Could I please have the check? So when you go to a restaurant, you're requesting for your check from the waiter or waitress. Could or could not is also used to express possibility. Okay, what kind of in what kind of situation is it used? Please have a look at the examples. Raju could not run faster than Siva. So it expresses that Raju cannot, sorry, Raju could not run faster than Siva. And the second example, she could have told us that she needed 
money. So in this example, it is said that maybe a group of friends are discussing the possibility that another friend could have told them that she needed money. So they are discussing the possible situation. Let's move on to the next model work. May or may not. May not is the negative form of may. So, when you use may or may not, when you are asked to give or ask permission. You may go out now. So, someone is giving you permission to go out now. In another situation, if you are going to ask your parents for permission to play, so what do you say? You say, may we go out to play? Or another example, may we examine some of these articles? The second purpose of may or may not is to express possibility. It may take a few minutes for the system to load. So in this situation, the person is expressing the possibility for the system to take a few minutes to load. I may not see you again as I will be away. So this person may be going away to a far place. So he is telling the another person that he may not see him again. So it is also expressing possibility. Another situation where you may express possibility is they may not have apples in their orchard. So maybe it is not planted in the orchard. So they are discussing the possibility of they may not have apples in their orchard. Okay, are you clear with the model verbs that you have learned until now? I hope you are. Let's move on to the next model verb. Must. Must. The negative form of must is must not. Let's have a look at the situation where you can use must or must not. Must or must not is used when it is necessary to do something where it is absolutely necessary. So what are the situations? Please think, what are the situations that normally occurs where it is necessary for you to do something? I'll give you some seconds to think. Okay, the first situation, you must study hard so that you can score flying colors in your examination. You must study hard so that you can score flying colors in your examination. So in this situation, it clearly says that if you want a good result, what you should do? You have to study hard. Flying colors here means excellent result. Okay. The second situation, we must keep our classroom clean and tidy. Of course, if uh, this is a common known fact that your classroom has to be clean and tidy just like your house. So the use of mass here is very important because it is necessary to keep your classroom clean and tidy. That's why you have duty rosters so that each of you can know what you should do, what part that you should be in charge of to keep your classroom clean and tidy. Let's have a look at the second use of must 
or must not. Must or must not is also used to express a command. Okay, what is a command? A command is something like an order where it is necessary to follow the order. So when it is necessary to do something, the word must or must not must be used. Must not is used in a negative situation. In which situations a command is necessary? Please have a look at the examples. The first example, you must be quiet during the exams. So this is a rule actually. So you must be quiet during the exams and you cannot make any noise. And the second example, you must not swim in a mining pool. Okay, a mining pool is a very dangerous place. So you must not swim in a mining pool. This is a command that you must obey. All workers must wear name tag in the building. So in this situation, it is a must for the workers to wear a name tag. So maybe if they don't wear the name tag, they can't enter the building. So it's a must for them to wear the name tag. Let's have a look at the next model work. Before we move on, let me emphasize the fact that must or must not is used when it is absolutely necessary to do something and to express a command. Moving on to the next model verb, should or should not. Should is the positive form and should not is the negative form. What are the functions of should or should not? When are they used in sentences? Okay, let's have a look at their first purpose. It is used to show necessity. Okay, what kind of necessity? Let's have a look. It's used to show that Muslim should tell her parents about the accident. Okay, in this situation, the girl Muslim shouldn't have hide, have to hide the situation about her accident. So it is recommended that she should tell her parents about the accident. So should is used to show necessity. Let's move on. To the next one. Should is also used to give advice. What kind of advice? Let's have a look. You should listen to your parents. Ravi, you should not be rude to your uncle. In the first situation, you should listen to your parents. This is some advice which are frequently given to everyone. So you should listen to your parents. Should here is used to give an advice. And looking at the second situation, Ravi, you should not be rude to your uncle. This is also an advice that are mainly given. So the word should not is used here. Okay, can you see the difference between the usage of should and should not? All right. How about the third purpose of should? Let's have a look. Should is also used to ask for someone's opinion. In this sense, let's have a look at the examples. Should we invite Hisham to the birthday party? So they're asking for opinion. Should we invite Hisham to the birthday party? Please take a look at the second example. 
Do you think I should give her the book? Do you think I should give her the book? So the person is asking for opinion if they should give the book to someone else. So when you answer, how do we answer? Yes, you should give her the book. So you're saying yes or no? Are you clear with the three, pur three purposes of should or should not? Firstly, it is used to show necessity. Second, it is also used to give advice. Third, it is used to ask for someone's opinion. Fourth, it is used to express a duty to do something. They should help their grandmother with the cooking. Helping the elderly with something is normally a duty. So in this sense, they are saying they should help their grandmother with the cooking. So should is also used to express a duty to do something. Finally, the last purpose of should is should is used to talk about something in a polite way. Should I visit him in the hospital? So you're asking, should I visit him in the hospital? So that is a polite way of asking if you should visit someone in the hospital. Okay, in what other sense can you use should? Should I go with them to the fun fair? That is another example for you to use. Are you clear with the purpose of should or should not? Okay, let's recap. Should or should not is used to show necessity. Besides that, it is used to give advice. Furthermore, it is used to ask for someone's opinion. It is also used to express a duty to do something. And it is also used to ask about something in a polite way. Okay, if you are clear with should or should not, let's move on to the next model work. Would or would not. Would or would not. Would is used to show a future action. So normally you will see time markers when you are going to have to use words such as time markers, such as words such as tomorrow, next week, next month. Let's have a look at the examples for you to get a clearer understanding. He said he would leave the computer behind. Mother said she would visit my uncle who is in hospital. Amina and her friends say they would not go to the concert again. So he said he would leave the computer behind. So he says that after he has used the computer, he would leave the computer behind. And when mother is saying that she would visit my uncle who is in hospital, she is indicating future plans. Amina and her friends say they would not go to the concert again. So they are indicating that they would not go to the concert again in the future. Okay, would or would not is used to show a future action. Let's have a look at the second purpose. Would or would not is also used to make a request. Would you accompany me to the library would you accompany me to the library so you're asking the person if they would follow you to the library would you like to dance so you're asking another person to dance with you the third example eric would not mind running an errand for me would he so all these three examples are samples of how would 
is used to make a request. Are you clear with the use of wood? Wood is used for two purposes. One is it is used to show a future action. Second, it is used to make a request. Have to or do not have to. When do we use have to or when do we use do not have to? Let's have a look. Have to is used to express necessity or obligation. So it is absolute, it's used when something is absolute, absolutely necessary or when it is obligated. Please have a look at the first example. Omar has to wake up early if he wants to join us. So in this situation, it, is, it shows a necessity. If he wants to join his friends, he has to wake up early. Let's take a look at the second example. They have to complete their test. Okay, this shows an obligation. If they want to score a good result, they have to complete their test. Am I right? So this shows an obligation. They have to complete their test. Let's have a look at the second purpose of have to or do not have to. Have to or do not have to is also used to express a command. What kind of commands? Let's take a look at the examples. The first example, you have to be quiet during the exams. So this is a command for the students to be quiet during the exams. You have to, you cannot go against this command. The second example, you do not have to tell her. So you do not have to tell her, this is also a command to not share something to another person. So you do not have to tell her. Okay, please take note here that when you use the word do not, it comes in front of the word have to. Okay, not behind. Please take note. Please do not confuse the way that you use the model verbs. Let's refer to the third example. Latif has to undergo surgery immediately. So in this situation, it's a command too because it's, an, it's a command to undergo surgery immediately. If not, something may happen to the person. So Latif has to undergo surgery immediately. Let's recap. The three basic rules of using models before we move on to some exercises. The rules are the same as what I have explained in the beginning slides, but I would like to re-emphasize on these rules because it is absolutely, absolutely necessary for you to follow these rules so that you do not use the inappropriate models. Let's have a look at the rules. The first rule. Do you remember what is the first rule? Okay, let's have a look. The first rule. Use model verbs at is as it is. Don't change. Please do not change. For example, adding as to the model verb makes it wrong. He can swim wrong there's no such word as can the correct sentence should be he can swim let's look at the second rule use 
base verb after model verb. Don't use infinitives. Use base verb after model verb. Don't use infinitives. Please remember this because most students always make mistake at uh, always confuse this rule and make mistakes. I must to leave. It is getting late. Okay, if you notice, most students will make this mistake. I must to leave. I must to read. I should to bathe. That is wrong. When you use the verb, it must not be with infinitive. The correct way of using the verb is I must leave. It is getting late. Please do not add on infinitives after the model verb. The model verb must be followed immediately by the base verb so that the sentence can be completed. If not, the sentence will be wrong. Remember, the model verb cannot stand on its own. It must be accompanied by another verb. Number three, use not after models. Use the word not after models. If you notice, in my example just now, I have shown you the not, the negative form of models. Can. The negative form of can is cannot. Should. The negative form of should is should not. Would. And the negative form of would is would not. So please use not after models. Don't use the word doesn't, don't, isn't, aren't. It's not appropriate, it's wrong. For example, you don't should smoke, should smoke. That is a wrong sentence. That's not the appropriate way. The correct sentence should be, you should not smoke. You should not smoke. Okay, that is an exception to this rule. Please take note of this exception too. The exception to this rule is the model verb have to. Okay, in this sentence, have to to must come with the infinitive have to so in this the exception is only for this model verb it doesn't apply for anything else so please take note of that let's move on to the practice keeping in mind all the uh, notes which we have gone through before so we shall have a look at the practice. Please keep in mind the basic three rules when you go through this practice. Here, if you look at the picture carefully, and then you have to choose the best sentence to fit each situation. Okay, students, please have a look at the picture. If you can see in the picture, here we have an image of two boys exercising. One of the boys is complaining that he feels so weak. And you can see that he is gasping for breath. So the question here is, what would be the most appropriate reply from the other boy? Let's have a look at the options given. A. You should eat more fruits and vegetables. B. You can eat more fruits and vegetables. C. You will eat more fruits and vegetables. So, what is the correct answer? Now, please take some time to read through. Focus on the model verbs 
please recall the use of should, can, and will. Now, let's look at the answers. Okay, the answer is option A. You should eat more fruits and vegetables. Should is the correct answer because it is used to give advice. Hence, being the correct answer. Can and will is the wrong answer because can is more to giving suggestion. While will is more to forcing the other boy to do so. You can't force anyone to eat anything. So, you cannot use will. Let's proceed. If you are clear, let's proceed to question two. The picture given shows that two girls are having a conversation. One of them replied, Sure, no problem to a question asked by the other girl. In your opinion, which model verb is the most suitable for the question asked? Let's look at the options. Option A. Would I borrow some money, please? Option B. Could I borrow some money, please? Option C. Must I borrow some money, please? Okay, please remember, you must choose the best sentence. The best sentence. There may be more than one option available, but what is the best sentence to fit the situation? Please recall the use of would, could, and must. Now, let's reveal the answer. The correct answer is option B. Could. Could I borrow some money, please? Could is the correct answer because it is used to ask for permission. In this case, the girl is asking for permission to borrow some money from her friend. Would and must are not the appropriate model verbs. Let's move on to the last question in exercise one. The picture shows a boy playing badminton. What is the best sentence to fit the situation? Let's look at the options. Option A. Robin would play badminton well. Option B. Robin should play badminton well. Option C. Robin can play badminton well. Please take some time to review the options and come up with the best answer. Okay, the correct answer is option C. Robin can play badminton well. Why is it the correct option? It's because can is used to show ability unlike would and should. So it shows the ability of the boy to play badminton well. Next. We will be doing another exercise. In this exercise, you will have to fill in the blanks with the correct answer. Number one, please read the question. We, blank, have to or could brush our teeth before we sleep. 
So what is the appropriate answer for the blank? Have to or could? It is a well-known fact that we have to brush our teeth before going to bed. So which is the best answer? Have to or could? Okay, I think you may know the answer. Let's reveal the answer. The correct answer is we have to brush our teeth before we sleep. Let's move on to the second question. Blank, may or should I have the pleasure to introduce my best friend to you? Reminder, in this sentence, the person is asking for permission. Therefore, which model verb fits the best? Do you know the answer? Let's reveal. May I have the pleasure to introduce my best friend to you? Moving on. To the third question. They blank must or can leave tomorrow or they will not make it for the meeting. This sentence is expressing obligation to do something. So, what is the best answer? Which answer shows? obligation they must or they can do you know the answer let's have a look they must leave tomorrow or they will not make it for the meeting so must is used here because it expresses obligation the last question for this exercise is Dash, would or could you like some coffee or tea? The situation here is someone is asking for what refreshment the other person would like. Therefore, which is the best model for this? situation. The best model verb to be used is would. Would you like some coffee or tea? Are you clear with the model verbs? Do you need any assistance? I hope what I have taught today is beneficial for you. And if you need any assistance or if you have any further questions, please do leave a comment in the chat box. And please remember, if you need to recall any part of this lesson, you can re-watch the video on this channel. So thank you for listening in to this session. Thank you for the clear explanation on exploring model verbs teacher. I hope all the students understand today's session very well. I hope the students have learned something new too. Okay, now let's move on. Teacher, yes. uh, Ms. Kosila, can you conclude on today's lesson? For today's lesson, I believe all of us have explored more about model verbs. There are many types of model verbs, but I have chosen to focus only on seven model verbs today. And I hope all the students are clear about the use of model verbs. 
the seven model verbs that we have gone through today are can, could, may, must, should, would, have to. All the model verbs are used to express a purpose. They have purposes on their own. So even though they may look familiar, they're actually used in different situations. And I hope the students can read more about the purpose of each model work so that they are using the correct model work in their sentences. Okay. Dear students, please don't leave because the link for the quiz will be given to you at the end of the session. The quiz will require students official Dalima email account. Students are not allowed to use their personal email account. Students will only receive certificates if they are able to score 80% and above in the quiz given. The admin will post the link now. Thank you Dita, for spending her time and giving some useful information. Special thanks to all our viewers out there for being with us throughout the session, whether on YouTube or Facebook Live. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click the notification bell for upcoming classes. That's all for today. Meet you again in the next lesson. Take care. Bye.